in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would enjoy i know the light button and then to like this video as well. i know the lamb because we believe that as this i know the light oh graces have won't be imparted i know the lamb I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. I follow the lion. I follow the lamb. Hallelujah. Listen. The ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer has become an age-long conflict which is more superior to which especially in the Pentecostal and the charismatic circles now I'm saying this respectfully this is a believers meeting am I right on that so we have a group that may perceive themselves to be people of prayer especially the prophetic and the apostolic ministry then we have those who perceive themselves to be people of the word. And sometimes the dichotomy is so wide that it almost looks as if there is enmity. But the Bible never created that dichotomy. Are we together? Jesus called himself the word. But he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Am I right on that? Now I want to show you the roles that they play. Please look up. Jesus went as the word of God. Went in Matthew chapter 4. Jesus went to go and pray and fast. Everybody please look up. Please look up. Please look up. Please look up. Jesus is done praying. Everybody say prayer. One more time. Say prayer. Jesus is done praying and the next thing he sees is that Satan appears to him. Am I right on that? Whether it's from the realm of his thoughts or it was a physical manifestation, the most important thing is that there was an interaction with this spirit entity, Satan. Are we together? And watch this. The first thing Satan told him is, don't forget that prayer produces power. Now in the place of prayer, you have power. Turn this stone to bread. In other words, convert that power to be an instrument for meeting your personal need. Forget about the bigger cause. That is the first. There are three temptations every man must survive to rise. I'm not teaching on that, but those temptations of Jesus. Number one is a temptation on your stomach. Manipulating the word of God and ministry to be used as an instrument of your stomach. Number two is spiritual laxity. He took him up a holy mountain and said, fall down. Spiritual carelessness. For he shall put his angels charge over you. The third temptation is a temptation of influence. He took him into an exceeding great mountain. And showed him the kingdoms of this world and their glories therefore. And he said, bow to me and I will give this to you. But this is not what we're discussing now. Watch this. Satan comes to Jesus and said, turn this stone to bread. Look at Jesus' reply. It is, he never said, I have prayed. It is, help me, it is. Why didn't he say, Satan, are you not respecting my prayer and fasting? Do you not know the energy that has been generated there? He said, it is written. Do you know if Jesus said, okay, Satan, that's a nice suggestion, and turned that stone to bread, his entire prayer life, the spiritual investment he has made, will be nothing. Simply because he did not know what was written. Then, let me show you now the value of prayer added to the word. Satan said, oh, I see that you respect the word too. So let's speak scripture now. Next temptation, Satan also said, it is written. 
he shall put his angels to uh, his angels charge over you they shall bear thee up on their wings satan is quoting scripture now lest you dash your feet against a stone now satan is saying it is written you are saying it is written that is where the power of prayer comes in that gives you the discernment because if you do if you have scripture alone and no discernment that has been generated satan will come like the damn cell in acts chapter 16 and also join you in prophesying and you say they are saying scripture is someone learning now satan said it is written i know it too and jesus said no by discernment i know that even though what is coming out of your mouth is scripture but you are not of god There are many, many people today who have the word but they just have history and literature in their minds because the power that, that backs up the word that should be generated in the place of prayer is not there. And so most people just become, respectfully speaking, historians and they just make, the Bible says, ye search the scripture for in them you think you will find life and you will not come to me. That the scriptures themselves testify of me. But ladies and gentlemen, do you know why the word of God is powerful? Because the word of God creates boundaries to your spiritual experiences. The Bible has a lot to say about the word of God. For instance, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, the Bible talks about the supremacy of the word. The supremacy of the word. Please give it to us. I hope someone is learning something this morning. Colossians 1 16. Let's read it if you can see it. Ready? One to read please. For by him, the word now, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Do you know what that means? That means even if you have an encounter outside this realm, the word of God still has supremacy. And you can use the word of God to vet every experience. So an angel can appear to you. And you can judge by the speakings of that angel. If it does not reveal Jesus. And it does not lead you through the pathway. You have a right to judge that angel by the word. To say no. This is inconsistent with the character of God. Most people do not have the word of God. And it has destroyed them in ministry look at this for instance let's assume that this gentleman seated and this lady say they are husband and wife do you know as a man of god by prayer and through the prophetic i can see for instance that there's something wrong with that lady but how i will handle it now would depend on my understanding of scripture not my understanding of prayer if this is a man of god and this is your church and this is your wife and there is something wrong number one the Bible says do not rebuke an elder in public. So I'm not about to go and embarrass him and the wife because it will have an effect on the fold. Are you seeing how the word of God guides you now to administer power with wisdom? Many people through the prophetic have, have, have access graces, but the word of God does not define the coordinates of their administering power. And they keep, they keep you know, mismanaging power. Imagine an electric, a high voltage naked wire on the ground will it do you any profit no you hold it and it will kill you but that same power can be channeled through a socket and you can charge something with it are you seeing now the word of god that's why the power of god resides within the word of god habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 the bible says in that sun like splendor is the hiding place of his power many people have not taken out time to be students of doctrine to be students of the word the bible says they gave themselves continually to the apostles doctrine please say doctrine one more time say doctrine now theologically speaking there are six foundational doctrines i'm not listing it for you there are six foundational doctrines that represent the believer's foundation if you do not have an encounter with these six doctrines building you are building upon shadows you find that in hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1 and 2 i'm not going to repeat it just you go and study it six of them 
foundational doctrines that build the believer of doctrine of baptisms repentance from dead works the bible lists them six of them that means when you begin to grow spiritually these are the foundational doctrines that you must learn are we together why is scripture important because it helps us to understand the ways of god the ways of god the ways of god the ways of god why is scripture important because it can open our eyes ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation are we still together now yes Acts chapter 20, I believe, and verse 32 or, or thereabout. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Among them that are sanctified. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, that it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified everybody say the word one more time say the word say doctrine one more time say the word say doctrine the course curriculum that builds a believer to become a witness is called doctrine it comes from the latin word doctrina it means a predefined body of knowledge that makes a student to become something exact are we together in my example yesterday, remember, a medical student from year one to the final year has a body of knowledge that he must learn. Are we together? So when you call somebody a doctor, you mean one who has exhausted that body of knowledge and has been vetted and accredited by a counsel. Am I right on that? Yeah. Doctrine. As a man of God, your concern is to come and teach God's people doctrine. Now, let me tell you this. You don't go and teach doctrine in a crusade ground and sometimes when you have a conference like this two three days you are you are short of time but as a pastor with your members you are not rushing anywhere so you take the time and teach don't teach members as if you are teaching in a conference you are not rushing anywhere they are there with you largely for years or for a lifetime so you take time methodically line upon line precept upon precept and let me tell you this when it has to do with knowing god our knowledge of god is infinite but when it has to do or the knowledge of god is infinite but when it has to do with raising believers to mature the body of truth that you communicate to them is finite there is an exact body of truth that you teach believers and then recycle it again and recycle it again so as a man of god your assignment is not newness it is freshness hmm. papa hagen spent his life teaching on faith and yet you will not listen to any of that message that looks like the other what what i think the pressure especially that the priesthood ministry in our world has today is there is such a itch to bring newness because it looks like i've taught on prayer Will I teach on prayer again? I've taught on fasting. I've taught on the word of God. I've taught on giving. I've taught on the kingdom. What else is there? Question. A professor who has been teaching in the university for 35 years, say in a faculty of medicine or architecture, what has he been teaching? Is it true that he has been teaching the same thing? Is it true that he has been teaching the same thing? <laughs> Faith comes by hearing and hearing faith comes by hearing and hearing faith comes by hearing psychologists and educationists teach us that at the initial point of communicating a thought less than 26 percent of it is truly assimilated by those who hear so forget that members shout and say yes they are not getting anything most times you will need to repeat it with diligence and seriousness members are masters of flattering you they will comment unnecessarily and walk out and believe me that 26 percent is even for a serious student 
to the point that after Jesus himself mentored the disciples, he said, when the spirit of truth is come, he will remind you again. Is it not in your Bible? He will, because the way you are now, chances are excellent, you will forget. He will bring back to your memories everything I have taught you. Say amen. amen. That's why we thank God for technology now that can help us capture teachings that you listen to it again. And as you listen to it, you will hear something you did not hear. Even if you are the one who preached it, you will hear something you did not hear. And God can join seemingly unconnected thoughts together for you that no one else will hear in that teaching. Everybody say the word. One more time, say the word. So I've taught you two agencies now in the making of men to become witnesses, to become people of glory. Number one, strategic and systemic prayer. Number two, and when I talk of prayer, you know that I also mean prayer with fasting. Hallelujah. Yes. Fasting is beneficial spiritually. Fasting is beneficial nutritionally. Are we together? Number three. Hmm. If you are learning, say amen. amen. You want to become a man of power. You want to become a man of grace. The third is called corporate fellowship. Write it down. Corporate fellowship is another mystery. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 corporate fellowship hebrews 10 25 charges us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together is that in your bible as the manner of some is but exhorting one another so much more as you see the days appearing listen to me if you want to become a man of power a man of grace a man that evolves into a vessel of honor you cannot ignore the place of corporate fellowship the convergence of believers together for the purpose of mentorship for the purpose of learning and for the purpose of growth this is very important you may have heard me teach that kingdom community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values every believer must have a company of believers that you are connected to this is very important. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Is that in your Bible? Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. The Bible says it is like the oil upon the head of Aaron the priest that comes down from his head to his bed, down to his garment, his skirt. The Bible says for there... God hath commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. No matter your personal walk with God, there are certain dimensions in your dealings with God that cannot happen to you alone. It will have to happen under the corporate anointing. Is someone learning now? While they prayed, the Holy Ghost said to them, Separate me, Paul. Is, is that in your Bible? while they pray together let me tell you the truth even if you encounter jesus in a vision he will still lead you back to his church for the continuity of your growth so don't say i don't need anybody i don't need any corporate gathering of believers it is a spirit of the antichrist it is deception are we together standing alone you will not be able to do much i promise you read bible history most of the believers that were alone they died early they could not stand the strength of many believers was when they were together and they returned to their company so you comfort one another how many of you have come to church very tired almost giving up and somebody just raises one song and while other people are just looking you are the only one crying because that song is healing you from something god placed an anointing this is why worship leaders in church must be serious in fact everybody in church workers must be serious pastors don't just deploy skill alone deploy spirituality and consecration and sacrifice 
because what they are singing is not a special number what they are singing is ministering life somebody's life depends on that song so you are supposed to lead a song you don't just stand up and then quickly check your list of songs and come and stand and you are the only one dancing you see that it's not ministering to the people it's very clear that you are, the, you are there's no life communicated when you stand to minister you reveal your secret place whether to minister in word or to minister in worship your communication is a window into your secret place and men can look and say what is this one now even those who are not spiritual can know you are raising a song of worship and people are sleeping there is nothing touching them everybody say fellowship question you have come for this conference now look at how many things you have learned does that mean you do not know god does that mean you do not have the holy ghost imagine that you were not here there are some of you what you are listening you are learning now maybe new some of you he's refreshing you again i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord let me give you number four are you learning show me a believer who follows these pathways and i show you a man who will become mighty let me recap number one that you must submit yourself to prayer submit yourself to the word submit yourself to fellowship are you ready now when you want to emerge you have to submit yourself to competence and to learning this is the fourth thing you will hardly hear this in church most times once we talk about prayer and the word we stop there but you want to become a career and a manifesto of the glory of God. You must submit yourself to competence as touching your area of calling and election. Proverbs 22 and verse 29. The Bible says, See thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. Are we together? He shall not stand before mean men. Please say competence one more time say competence there is a relationship between competence and excellence and the glory of god it says oh lord our god how excellent is your name there are many people who submit themselves in truth to prayer they submit themselves to the word they submit themselves to fellowship but they have not seen the value or the need to be competent competent in ministry competent in career competent in business you are a preacher don't come and stand let me tell you the truth the world that we live in today has options nobody will come and submit to your spiritual leadership with a man who you are not sound in scripture you are not even vast as to life because there are times you have to draw examples look at jesus he used parables from real life experiences you need in in your church are professors in your church are intellectuals nobody will come and make a fool of himself just coming to submit to nothing are we together no man will carry his wife and children and submit indefinitely and they are not learning learning and sound communication is a product of competence every scripture you quote is wrong even when you read it from the bible you are still reading what is wrong no no apostle god has called me to be a prophet stop moving around and embarrassing yourself learn the prophetic ministry sharpen yourself huh god has made you a teacher submit to doctrine get materials go for training if need be so that you are sound when you are giving a sound exegesis of scripture people listen to you you are not communicating opinions this is not just english apostle i'm a businessman tell me what you know about business all i want to make is money no sir there are certain corridors of glory you will not get to are we together did you know that there are two people in scripture who rose to a position of influence and for all of them it was competence that took them there number one is joseph you find that in genesis 40 41 42 those two chapters talks about his final faces in the prison 
up to the time of his interpreting Pharaoh's dream, his eventual exaltation. He was exalted and the Bible says he was given a wife to marry the daughter of, of Potiphar, the priest of On. And they gave him a name, Zaphathaniah. They gave him a name, a, an Egyptian name. And he became a great man. He said, I am Pharaoh and only by your word will Egypt be ruled. Can we find such a man so discreet and wise in whom the spirit of the gods is? Number two was Daniel in Babylon. Daniel was among the eunuchs that went into captivity. And when you read Daniel 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, And Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's portion. Are we together? He was so sound in Daniel chapter 2. When you read from verse 28, now about to interpret the king's dream, the Bible says, Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And you now begin to read, you see that Daniel was elevated, he was exalted. You want to see the extent of Daniel's exaltation? Read Daniel chapter 5 from verse 1 downwards and then Daniel chapter 6 from verse 1 downwards. That they decided to put precedence and out of them, one of them was Daniel. And that he was such an exceptional person to a point that when the enemies of the kingdom wanted to find an occasion... They could not trace it to incompetence. They had to use prayer to trap Daniel. What a man. Make a covenant with yourself right now today. Whether you are a pastor, whether you are a businessman, that you will run away from incompetence. I respect the fact that you are a man of prayer. I respect the fact that you are a man of the word. And respectfully speaking, co-laborers in the vineyard, can I encourage us and beseech us by the message of God? Let's stop wasting the time of God's people. Otherwise, we'll be ready for empty pews in these last days. Because there are many alternatives. There are many options. That the opening of your mouth will be like the gates of wisdom being opened. People look forward to listening to you. Ah, he said, oh, that in, I was in the days of my youth. Right? When the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. And that by his light, I, I went through darkness. The young men saw me and stood. The old men saw me. They refrained their mouths from speaking. The excellency of wisdom. I made up my mind as a covenant. That it's not just being anointed that, that I will present to the world. I will do my homework. I will make sure by the grace of God, I obtain grace to be competent. I, Daniel, understood by books. The Bible says to buy the truth and sell it not. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke spiritual laziness. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke intellectual laziness. Men of God, let's prepare our sermons with diligence. Don't stand on the stage and it will be very clear. You see, members are not stupid people. They know when you have not done your homework. To the point that they will stop shouting amen to your prayers. Because there is a track record of prolonged unseriousness. May you be so competent that people will come to learn God through you. They listen to you. As a businessman, they want to, they want to tap into your wisdom. The Bible says be wise as a serpent. When it has to do with living and excelling in the cosmos, you can even borrow the wisdom of the serpent. You see... There's no time I would have shown you from the life of the man we call Abraham. Did you know that when it had to do with the matters of the altar and matters of spirituality, Abraham was powerful, but he was ignorant. And when God wanted him to understand that secular knowledge, he took him to go and learn the wisdom is in your Bible. He took him to the house of Abimelech. He went there. Same thing with Moses. Moses went to learn the wisdom of the Egyptians. Most believers do not know that you need to have intelligence even of understanding the laws of life and the laws of destiny. It's not just spiritual laws alone. Destiny and life has laws and systems. Do you understand organization? Do you understand leadership? Do you, do you have people skills? Do you know how to coordinate systems to make them work? You can have a church that comes because of the anointing you are in. And you will find out that it will become a place of confusion because there is no organization. The first thing that came back to life 
in the dry bones of Ezekiel are the skeletons. Skeletons talk of structure. Before God will give life to any organization, the structure must be in place. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So, number one, prayer. Number two, the ministry of the word. Number three, corporate fellowship. Number four, competence. Are you ready for number five? You must submit yourself to character development. Character. Second Peter chapter one, please. Let's begin our reading from verse five. Character. Write it down. If you want longevity of impact, you want to be the vessel that hosts the glory of God for a long time. Neglect this and you do it at the peril, the expense of your relevance. Second Peter chapter one from verse five. Please look up everybody. And besides this, giving diligence, add to, everybody say add to, add to, that's right. Thank God for the ones you have, but there is still something to add to. It says add to your faith, virtue, moral excellence, and to virtue, knowledge. Verse 6, reading to 10, and to knowledge, self-control. And to self-control, patience. And to patience, godliness. Seven. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity or love. Verse eight. If these things be in you, including the ones you have added, they make that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful, in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. It says, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, for he had forgotten that he was purged of his old sins. Final verse 10. It says, Wherefore the rather, brethren, use these additions to give diligence so that you will make your calling and your election sure. It says, For if this, if ye do these things, what is the, the prophecy there? Ye shall never fall. Ye shall never fall. Ye shall never fall. Anybody praying for your downfall will only be wasting their time. Because, in addition to this, that if you can add, that means no matter your spirituality, your rema, if you don't add character, there is a problem with the longevity of your impact. And unfortunately, respectfully so many have become victims of this in the night i'm going to teach you on empowerment since we're doing the miracle service and i'll be teaching you that there are three things that follow mantles you see there are spiritual backings in terms of angels angelic activities that signify certain revelations according to revelation 1 verse 1 the revelation of jesus which he gave unto his servant john the bible says he sent it and signified it by his angel so there are angels that don't follow men they follow certain anointings for instance when thank god for your gracious protocol system we have people from the DSS, the military, and all of this. And, and I'm so thankful for, you know, their intelligence. And I just sat back and watching all of them professionally communicating with themselves. I think you should celebrate them. Now, watch that. If the governor of your state is to come here now, in the capacity as a governor, are we together? There are certain people and certain military paraphernalia that comes with him they don't come to him as a person they follow the office so when certain mantles are on you i'm telling you three things i'm giving you a teaser for tonight number one is that there are certain angelic backings that follow you number two men will follow you but number three there are spirits that are attached not to men but attached to mantles demonic spirits now they don't follow men they have no business following you. They follow whoever is the carrier of that mantle. So if you are Samson, Delilah starts looking for you. Not because you have any business with her. She was assigned to follow whoever is Samson. Hmm. Say amen. Amen.
That is the reason why God does not answer certain prayers of more anointing. Do you know why? Because the battles that you are about to confront, you don't have the spiritual intelligence to maintain victory at that level. So God will love you by keeping you in that state until revelation comes. I went up by revelations. Galatians 2 and verse 2. And I went up by revelation. You don't go up by desire. It takes revelation. Are we learning? Character. Please look at me. Character is very powerful because it sustains the ability to preserve that which God places on your life. There are many, many men of God. There are many people who do not have character. Character over the lust of the eyes. Please look at me. The Bible categorizes them into three. Remember? Love not the world, neither the things that are in this world. The Bible says, if any man, doesn't matter who you are, loves the world, he said the love of the Father is not in you. Then he says, all that is in the world, and list categorizes them into three. Number one, the lust of the flesh. Number two, the lust of the eyes. Number three, the pride of life. Everything that will bring you down is in these three categories. What is the lust of the flesh? The impulses that come to you by reason of wearing a more a mortal body. Gluttony. Moral deficiencies in terms of immorality. All of these things are lust of the flesh. That means if you did not have a body, there will be no need. I, I hope you know that. Yes. The reason why you are in that kind of trouble is because you have a body. Then number two, lust of the eyes. The temptations and the impulses that come to you by reason of the power of sight. Covetousness. Is it not because you could see? If you were blind, hopefully you would have been safe. But now that you have a pair of eyes, you saw your colleague rising. You saw his membership and bitterness and jealousy. All of these things are product, the side effect of having a pair of eyes. That's why you must pray and sanctify your eyes. That Lord, no matter what my eyes see in the name of Jesus, I will not allow the devil to midwife my sight and my heart. Between my eyes and my heart, let the blood of Jesus purge everything. So that the elements of jealousy, am i together now you can be as anointed as whatever what made saul want to kill david he saw that this young man had a great potential and the women now complicated the matter saul killed one thousand david killed ten thousand and saul said no no this guy must die and he used a javelin it took david having wisdom to run away can i tell you you must trust God to purge your eyes. This unhealthy competition that exists among men of God and all kinds of things. These eyes you see is a gift from God. But these eyes can be a weapon of mass destruction. There are people who went to hell today because of their eyes. That's why the Bible says if your eye causes you to sin, it says pluck it out. It doesn't mean remove, remove it like this. No, you have to understand what the Bible is saying. Are we together now? To pluck it out does not mean to remove it. To plug it out means cause it to lose its strength and efficiency as far as partnering with the devil to destroy you is concerned. When you plug out your eyes, it no longer works. So he's talking about being dead to the flesh holistically. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.